and welcome once again to the show that fuels your appetite for adrenaline and alternative sports. Two features this week and coming up later, we're in Austria for highlights of the most recent edition of the Peak to Creek, a multidiscipline event, the best athletes from eight different sports. But first, we take you to Salden in Austria as we join over 3,000 amateur and professional cyclists as they embark on a cycle marathon, which will take them 238 kilometres over 13 hours. Your reporter, Chris Hartley. Come rain or shine, the Ortsthaler Cycle Marathon is always a tough challenge. But when the rain is already pouring down early on, some lose their courage. <laughs> The real men and women are put to the test here, not like on the tour where you can pop your hand up and you're given a jacket and a fresh hat. You have to have everything on you. It's always better when it's raining at the start, that way you can be well prepared. You can put everything on already. I still have a couple of rain jackets in the back, including the bike, I think I weigh 120 kilos. Former cycling professionals like Jan Ulrich and Jörg Ludovic are prepared for any circumstances. The autumn weather and temperatures of less than 10 degrees don't keep last year's winner Stefan Kirschmeyer away, nor does it discourage the other 3,300 starters. The waiting comes to an end shortly before 7 o'clock. The Ortsthaler Cycle Marathon, one of the most difficult one-day races, begins for the 33rd time. The quickest riders require seven hours to complete the course, which covers four alpine passes. The final few riders will cross the finish line after around 13 hours. From Zolden, the riders travel to the Kutai, then over the Brenner Pass to Italy, before the Jaufen Pass and the Timmelsjoch put the love between a rider and their bike to the test. Overall, the cycling enthusiasts will cover 238 kilometres and a total incline of 5,500 metres. The icy winds are particularly relentless. The torture begins with a 30 kilometre long descent. No chance to warm up. After oats comes the first climb and an opportunity to warm up the muscles. The inclines of up to 18% are almost a release for some. The 20 km stretch leading to the Kutai sees the steepest stages of the York style of a marathon, alternate with flatter sections. It's anything but easy to find a good rhythm here. While the first 1,200 metres of incline had been tackled at the Kutai, there is doubt creeping in amongst some enthusiasts at the refreshment stop. From the Kutai to Kamartan, it's all about trust. The rider has to rely fully on their bike on the descent to make sure it carries them safely down the 1,300 metres. However, the rider has to make sure they stick to the trail and don't cool down completely. <laughs> It's not uncommon for a rider's love of cycling to lead them to dizzying heights and through deep valleys. But this journey through glacial regions, low mountain ranges and wine-growing districts demands everything from them. They brave the wind and the weather because they have set the goal of being back in Solden by half past eight in the evening. It's a lifelong dream for many. Near the front is the freezing Jörg Ludovic. I can't brake or change gears with my left hand anymore. I have to reach over with my right hand. 
Innsbruck signals the end of the first 90 kilometres. Next up is an almost 40 kilometre journey along the old Brenner Street to the Brenner Pass. It may be the longest incline of the marathon, but it is also the gentlest. With a maximum gradient of 12%, riders can be tempted into a quicker pace, while their energy unnoticeably fades. Amateur cyclists and former pros tackle around 800 metres of incline at this stage as they pass through the villages of Steinach and Matrai. When they reach the top of the pass, they will have completed more than half of their journey. While the leading group, including Roberto Conico, Jörg Ludovic and Enrico Zen, have reached Italy after three hours, for many other riders, it will be midday before they reach the next checkpoint, a refreshment stop at the Brenner Pass. Both man and machine need a break. It was really tough in the rain, horrible. The first 25 kilometres downhill were terrible. Then came the climb, that was okay. We warmed up a bit. Then the next descent, dreadful. At the top of the mountain, what's it called again? Uh, Kuntal. 3.5 degrees. I was a block of ice on the way down. From around 1,400 metres at the top of the Brenner Pass, the riders come down to just under 1,000 metres above sea level. They then ride the 20 kilometres to Stursing before tackling the gruelling Jaufen Pass. Beyond the Italian border, the summer is showing its nicer side. The descent was really tough, just keeping yourself on the bike with ice-cold fingers. That was fierce, but this part's enjoyable. Can you give me a lift for a bit? This is horrible. The Alfen Street is a relationship test. Will the rider and the bike stick together for better or for worse? Even... Well, saying it's love is a bit too far. I enjoy it when things are going well, but I wouldn't call it love. The ascent up the Jaufen Pass drags on. It's a good 1,100 metres of incline from Sturzing. The winding roads with a 12% gradient demand excellent morale, with some of the riders having been going for seven hours at this point. Above the trees awaits the next refreshment stop. Two thirds of the arduous journey have now been completed. It's time we saw real proof of a loving relationship between rider and bike. It was born out of suffering a slip disc and being told I couldn't ride a bike anymore. I'm a mountain biker and I said to myself, OK, I'll build something for the road. It took me three years to finish. My love is for the 26-inch tyres rather than the road bike. Three years of assembling and tinkering. I'm very proud of it. Gebastelt, gefummelt, gemacht. Ja, und jetzt eigentlich stolz drauf. And we'll conclude this epic event after the break. After which we have multidisciplinary action from the peak to creek. See you in a couple of minutes.